Hello everyone, my name is Kamal, welcome back to my channel. And if you have known me for a while, you would know that I have a little something for portrait photography. And by little something, I mean that it's my favorite thing to shoot. And so that's what we're talking about today. So portrait photography is one of the more popular types of photography around nowadays, and I think it's due to multiple reasons. And the first one I want to talk about is the act of capturing someone through time. Now throughout humanity we can see in many periods different ways of capturing people in time, it being paintings or drawings or whatever. For example, in the Middle Ages they used to paint important people, or like there was a time they used to paint people when they were dead so their family could keep memories. There are many different instances in that in the world, but fast forward nowadays it's more accessible, quicker than ever, and it's something that everybody has access to. And the fact that you can literally stop time around someone and keep this moment as a concrete memory, it's not in your brain, it's concrete, you can see it on the screen, on paper, or whatever. When you take it in, it's kind of mind-blowing. And it's true that this technically applies to landscapes, public places too. These are inanimate things. And so with a portrait, it's a bit more personal because you're basically stopping time around this person, getting a memory of them, and basically conserving it. And it's true that in some cases it's more staged, in some cases it's to promote clothing, but in some other instances it can be candid, it can be a family photo, it can be anything. And no matter the goal behind it, you're still capturing a moment in time, you're still capturing this person, how they were at that specific moment. And if you take this into a vacuum, it's a very weird concept. Because with an inanimate object, it sort of makes sense because it's an inanimate memory. But when you can stop somebody and conserve this thought of them, I think there's something very personal about that and I think that's one of the main appeals of portrait I can't talk. And I think that's one of the main appeals of portrait photography. But my second point kind of builds upon that. It's the human aspect side of portrait photography. I used to be hugely introverted. I had very little social skills. But since I started taking photos, I naturally drifted towards portrait photography at some point or another. And at first it was really hard because, you know, it was communication and whatever. But after that, I got a bit more comfortable with it, and I just kept on meeting new people after new people after new people. And I think there's a very nice experience about that, because when you're having to meet someone just because you want to make friends, there's a sort of pressure, you know, like, I want to be friends with this person, and so you start setting goals in your head or whatever, it's kind of weird. But when you both have something you want to do together, like doing a photo shoot, it creates a natural link, because you guys eventually start talking, you know, you like these poses, these locations, and so it gives you something to talk about. And even though I'm not ending up best friends with every people I'm doing a shoot with, of course not. This sort of human aspect to it makes it sort of, you know, kind of a bit more personal. And there's something to be said about, you know, going with other photographers, going to locations, having fun with them, you guys are all into the same thing, and this is great. But I think that there's also something to be said about, you know, meeting people and taking their photo. Because on one hand, you're establishing human contact with them, but on the other, there's a certain level of trust, because these people are giving you the right, or if you want, the opportunity, to capture them in time. And so when they give you this permission, they're kind of putting all their trust in you, because this is how they're going to be remembered at this time, you know, especially nowadays in the age of social media. When you want to see how somebody looked five years ago, you're definitely going to scroll in their Instagram or Facebook or whatever. And if we skip selfies and, you know, grandma photos taken on a smartphone, if you want to take it to the portrait type, I think there's this really, you know, personal connection when somebody takes your portrait because it's a memory of yourself, you know. And we tend to all think we live under a spotlight, so it's kind of flattering having our photo taken. At first I was very reluctant to ask people if I could do shoots with them because, you know, it would come out as creepy, like, can I take your photo? Yeah, I, I wouldn't be comfortable with that. But then I started seeing, like, it's something that people actually enjoy. I'm not the only one enjoying that, you know. We tend to live thinking we have a spotlight on us and being like, yeah, they're gonna think about me and like whatever and it becomes all dramatic. And then it's like, oh, this guy wants to take a photo of me, that's nice. And all these little social things, these sorts of human connections, make portrait photography such an interesting thing to do. Because we're talking about lots of things here, but these are all like philosophical things, you know, they're all ideologies, they're all thoughts, but none of them have anything to do directly with the art of portrait photography, you know. And I think the cool thing about portrait photography is that on one hand it's something very artistic, you know, you can do lots of different things. But on the other hand, I think that because of this human part, it kind of transcends that. And before I go on, I'd like to interrupt and say this video is sponsored by Square... No, I'm kidding. I wish though. Squarespace, if you want. 
sure i need a website by the way i just wanted to tell you if you're enjoying the content make sure to subscribe please follow me on instagram if you need any advice for photos or whatever you can dm me there of course if you guys need to shoot whatever let's get back to the video and so as i was saying all of these little social things that connect to portrait photography just make it a bit more interesting add a bit of spice to it if you want and before we go on i'm gonna scroll through my gallery see a few portraits and i'm gonna tell you guys some story behind them because you know Every portrait has a story behind them, so what photo can you do? Okay, this photo is good. So, this portrait, for example, is not only a good candid, but it's one of those really good moments. This is right before COVID, when we used to have these little hangouts with my friends. I have a room in my house with a small table in the middle, and so we used to all sit there. And this is Michael playing cards. It's very funny, you can see Alessandro face palming on the side because we're all losing like idiots. Michael's laughing because he's about to win. And then you can see Alex on the side trying to peek on, on Michael's card. The, this photo, like, it's not only it's candid, so it's a very genuine moment, but also reminds me kind of of this sort of easier time that we used to have before COVID. I mean, after restrictions got better and I got vaccinated, I started seeing my friends again. But you know, I'm sure you guys know it's definitely not the same. I mean, personally, I'm still reluctant to see people in big groups. I'm still trying to pay attention despite the fact that I'm vaccinated. So this just brings back lots of memories. Okay, so what photo next? Ooh, this photo is a good one. So this photo brings a lot of memories too. This is my friend Manon, and this was right before she left Lebanon. We had this habit of always taking photos together, and we used to listen to bands like Asking Alexandria and Linkin Park and Motionless in White together. And so we're just like, yeah, we just grabbed a vinyl, a Linkin Park vinyl, and we just posed it with photos. And this was my favorite photo of the bunch. It just reminds me again, you know, last days of high school right before I went to university. And this was right after the first lockdowns when they were a bit more flexible. We could still see people at their own homes. These were really good days. And I love this photo. Okay, just one more. Okay, so this photo. So Jeremy and I were trying to get some photos in the woods. But then at some point we were like, sorry for this little pause there, Lebanon problems, there's a power cut, but let's just go on with the video. And so this day Jeremy and I just took a bunch of great photos, we had a blast, and this is kind of a peak of this summer, which I really enjoyed despite the conditions because I tried disconnecting, going in the woods with my friend, listening to lots of music, so it was really a great time. And I think this pretty much sums it up, I mean as you can see I have really good memories of these shoots and they bring back very good memories and this kind of applies to commercial shoots too i mean i didn't meet my closest friends there but i met really nice people with who i have lots of fun and have fun creating things and i really think this wraps it up because as you can clearly tell i'm really fond of portrait photography i really enjoy spending time with people and i think it's really fun you know i mean creating stuff is really fun but then creating stuff with people just adds a whole layer to it and i think that this small layer of, you know, social interaction that's present in portrait photography really adds to it. And I think that wraps up the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a like, let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see next, and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Peace out, guys. No, say that he calls you insane. Yeah, we'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> you